I've lived here now 46 years, and I can remember going to Annie's stand and buying flowers and vegetables. My favorite were the beets. The beet greens were so good. In the early 20th century, Asian Americans, and especially Japanese Americans, experienced harsh discrimination at the hands of the U.S. government and stigmatization at the hands of the American people. In 1942, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the infamous Executive Order 9066 that interned Japanese Americans in concentration camps with harsh conditions for nothing other than the crime of being of a Japanese descent. At the same time, there was a significant complex of Japanese farmers that established agriculture on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. All that remains of this first of the many farms that once covered the peninsula is this humble brass plaque in Founders Park commemorating the farm of Kumikichi Ishibashi, while the land the farm once sat on is now the Trump National Golf Course. And while the last remnant of this legacy is in jeopardy of a similar fate, members of the Rancho Palos Verdes City Council, including Mayor David Bradley and Mayor Pro Tem Barbara Ferraro, are intent on making sure this history is not lost. My name is Dave Bradley. I'm the currently serving mayor of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. I'm Barbara Ferraro and I'm Mayor Pro Tem of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. It was a tradition and they were here before World War II and then many of them were removed forcibly to internment camps during World War II and yet they still wanted to come back here and farm this land. The farm once owned by James Hatano sits right near the coast with a scenic view of the Pacific Ocean. Its caretaker, Martin Martinez, has been operating the farm since Hatano's passing in 2015. So the Hatano Farms, um, last uh, Tuesday, two weeks ago, the City Council uh, voted to uh, go up forward with termination of the historic lease. Uh, several of my fellow council members were concerned with the idea that it was a gift of public funds because the historic lease was well below market value. But the land is out of compliance with federal laws regarding the use of public spaces. Unfortunately, the farm at, uh, being operated and leased out was also against the uh, covenants that the federal government had encumbered that property with when it was transferred to the city. There were a couple issues with the legacy lease um, that were uh, taken care of at the last uh, city council meeting. At a council meeting in December of 2021, the council had voted four to one to terminate the lease. Mayor Bradley was the sole dissenting vote. Yeah, I disagreed with some of my, council, my fellow council members because this was our opportunity to try to give an ode and a nod to the legacy Japanese farmers. Um, I thought that uh, we could have come up with something where we could have uh, continued to lease out the farm to Mr. Martinez. Um, unfortunately, that was just not to be. Now, though the lease is still to be terminated, they've committed to finding ways to ensure the farm itself remains. We've directed staff to go off and investigate how to turn it into a National Historic Monument or landmark and how we can come up with ideas to be able to operate the farm um, as a farm um, and to demonstrate to the community and to, the, uh, to our students kind of the history, real history, and seeing it there. So I think it's a tremendous opportunity we have now um, as staff works out the plan to go forward. We have a connection. Our city has a connection with Japan now because we've become sister cities with Sakura City. We have a cultural heritage that I think will really be lost if we totally do away with this farm. And even if we make it into something else and put a plaque up, it's not the same as having a working farm. My mom always told me, where there's a will, there's a way. And I think we have a will to preserve this heritage so that our children know what the farmers went through too.